Questions 10 to 13 in the ASIC green paper. Question 10. The total force exerted by the floor on the bed is. So this is a pretty simple question. The total force exerted by the floor on the bed is going to be equal to the amount of force that's going through each leg of the bed. So through leg X is 700 newtons of force as uh, told to us in the stem and through leg Y is 800 newtons of force. So therefore the total force is going to be 700 plus 800 which is equal to 1500. So C is the correct answer for question 10. Question 11. The mass of the patient is so the force due to the uh, bed and bedding, which I've labeled as FB, is going to be equal to the um, mass times the gravity constant. So in this case, the mass of the bed and bedding is 90 kilograms and the gravity constant is 10. Therefore, um, the force due to the bed and bedding is equal to 900 newtons. So in the previous question, we found the weight, the total weight of the patient, the bed and the bedding, and that was equal to 1500 newtons. So to find the weight uh, slash mass of just the patient, we need to subtract the total weight by the force slash weight of the bed and bedding. And that's what I've done here. So we've got our weight, uh, weight of just the man, and that is going to be equal to 1500, which is the total weight of the bed, bedding, and patient, uh, minus 900 newtons, which is the force due to the bed and bedding, the weight due to the bed and bedding. So that gives us a weight of 600 newtons, but the weight is not equal to the mass, which is what we're trying to find. So the mass of the man is equal to 600 newtons divided by the gravity constant, which is which means that the mass of the man is equal to 60 kilograms. So B is the correct answer for question 11. Question 12. So there are a couple ways to answer question 12, and one of them is to resolve for torques around a specific pivot point. So torque is a measure of how much a force causes something to rotate. And it's found by, um, figure, by this formula. So torque is equal to the distance that that force acts from the pivot point times the uh, perpendicular component of that force. So in this case, what we have is two torques. We have a um, anti-clockwise, sorry, cl clockwise torque and a anti-clockwise torque. So the force that is acting um, and causing a clockwise torque is this one at uh, the the leg at point X, and the force that is acting in an anti-clockwise uh, way is the weight force of the patient, bed, bedding, etc. So the clockwise torque acts at a distance L from our pivot point. So if we set Y as our pivot point, um, X is acting at a distance L from our pivot point, and the perpendicular component of that force is 700 newtons. So therefore our torque clockwise is equal to L, our distance, times 700. So 700 L is our clockwise torque. For our anti-clockwise torque, well, we're trying to find that distance x, um, the distance that it acts from y, and uh, our perpendicular force is going to be equal to the total uh, weight of the patient bed and bedding, which is 1500 newtons, as we found in question 10. So our torque anti-clockwise is equal to 1500x. If we state that our torque clockwise is equal to our torque anti-clockwise, because this system is in equilibrium, no, nothing is moving, therefore the torque clockwise must equal our uh, torque anti-clockwise. What we get is 700L is equal to 1500X, so therefore X, the center of gravity of the uh, patient bed and bedding, is equal to 700 on 1500 times L, so therefore X is equal to 7 on 15L, Therefore, the center of mass is 715L 
from leg Y. So therefore, for question 12, A is the correct answer. So another way that you can answer question 12 is via a bit of guesstimation. So it's not always the case that you can do this in the Gamsat exam. It just so happens that for this question, with a bit of applied logic, you can. We know that if through legs X and Y, there is a force of 700 newtons and 800 newtons going through it respectively. The amount of force going through each leg is going to be proportional to how close the center of mass is to it. So say for example, our man, instead of he was lying down, he was just standing up straight, but he was standing on only side Y. What we'd expect is that the total force uh, weight force through leg Y would be way higher than leg X. And hopefully you should just sort of know this instinctively. If you stand on one side of the bed, that side of the bed is going to um, experience a greater weight force. So what we can say therefore is that the center of mass um, is going to be slightly closer towards Y than X because the amount of force going through Y is a little bit higher than the force going through X. So we'd expect our center of mass to be somewhere around here. <clears throat> now, it just so happens that the answers are sort of different enough that that's sufficient to answer it. So let's skip A and B. Um, let's start with C. So C implies that the center of mass is halfway between each leg. But we know that's not true because if that was true, then X would have the same amount of force going through it as leg Y, and it doesn't. So we can rule out C. D implies that the um, center of mass is extremely close to leg Y, so only one eighth of the whole length of the bed. But we know that's not true because the, um, the center of gravity is only, sorry, the force going through Y is only a little bit bigger than X. So only 100 newtons out of a total of 1,500 newtons. So therefore we can sort of rule out D because it's way too close to Y. B on the other hand um, is too far away from Y. So B implies so 8 on 15. 8 on 15 is a little bit over halfway. Um, so we'd expect, so B is essentially saying that our center of gravity is somewhere around here. But that would imply that the weight, uh, the total force going through X would be greater than the total force going through Y. So therefore, that is a true. And therefore, for question 12, A is the correct answer. Question 13. Suppose the nurse uses two identical weighing scales instead of one, and that he places the pair of legs at X on scale A, and at the same time the pair of legs at Y on scale B. In this case, the readings on the two scales would be. So this is sort of a strange question. It's a bit simple. The answer is A, um, that scale A would have a reading of 700 newtons and scale B would have a reading of 800 newtons. Basically, um, by using two scales at once instead of one, we're not changing the amount of force going through each leg because the center of gravity is still going to be at that same position and therefore the the forces going through leg x and leg y are going to be unchanged so um, for question 13 a is the correct answer